The second precursor is what? Prolonged or protracted or prevailing prayers. You know, the first time I met Apostle Warume, I almost, I almost turned back. He said, if you are 20 years old and you have not prayed in tongues for 10 hours, he said you are a clown. <laughs> See, there is something long prayers does to your soul. You will not know how weak you are until you begin to trade on the altar. The altar reveals to you your weaknesses. And what it does is that it develops you so that your weaknesses can become your strength. That's why Jesus came in Luke chapter 18 verse 1. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. That means the only way a man can be restored to be like God is by prayer. It is man's default mode to pray. We were created for prayer. Because prayer is a spiritual infrastructure for connecting essentially to God. So a man who does not pray does not understand how to relate with the spirit. He may study about that spirit from books. But for him to come into the environment of a spirit and learn the ways of that spirit, he must engage that spirit experientially. Prayer is valuable to us to interact with the spirit of God until we become like him. So Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. But there are many believers who are not praying. You may think you are strong. If you want to check your energy in the spirit, he can look at you and tell you that, Kai, don't travel tomorrow. You didn't tell him. Something has activated. He has picked his tools in the spirit. The Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. That means there is a strength in the spirit that is not natural. You can begin with God with your natural strength, like you came to church by ATP. But for you to do the business we are doing in the altar, you need to receive another kind of strength. He said in Isaiah 40 verse 28, he said, have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not, neither is he weary? That means when they check the lexicon of the spirit, the only being that does not have the ability to faint or be weary is God. But they also went further because there's a wisdom. We have checked the whole realms. Only God has the ability to continue operating and he doesn't get weary or faint. The reason is because he's the El Shaddai. As the El Shaddai, he's the multi-breasted one. He sustains all and is sustained by none. Depression is not consistent with his nature. He said, have you not heard? Because this thing is popular in the spirit realm. All the spirits are aware that God doesn't know how to grow weak. But he now said, there is a technology that he made available to humankind. He said, they that wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength. Something happens to them. A dimension from God is downloaded. So they mount up with wings like eagles. He said, suddenly, a man, because before he gave you the contract, he said, even the young men shall be weary and shall utterly fall. That means, among the human race, the young men are the most strongest. He said, but compared with the spirit of God, the young men have a destiny of fainting and becoming weary. But, whether you are young, old, or weak, there is a technology in God. They say, they that wait upon the Lord. They mount up with wings like the eagles. Something now happens to them. He say, when they run, they will not be weary. When they walk, they will not faint. Why? They have become like God. So the possibilities that are locked up in God is also possible to operate in a man. The thing is not because the man is young or old. What will make the dimensions of God find expression in a man is his, his wisdom to take advantage of prayer. Because when he begins to pray, what makes God who he is and gives him his peculiarity, those same dimensions can begin to express themselves through a man. So you can see a man of 50 years, he is praying in tongues from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. If your advantage is your gift and your charisma, you are weak. You will not know until you enter into the battle arena. Your advantage is not in your body. It's in the mountains of Zion. It is prayer that will take you there. Sometimes we say this thing humorously so people can relate. I now knew that open door is not a function of intelligent preaching. The same way I knew transformation was not a function of doctrinal exegesis. It is the spirit that you communicate. But before you can communicate a spirit, something will happen to your soul. That's why I told you, some of you, what you call disgrace is actually a school of the spirit. Some of you, what you call setback is a school of the spirit. 
there is something in you called pride it will not allow the voice of god to be heard every time you are talking your pride stands like this it blocks god and people can't see god and god wants you to communicate him so what he will do is that he will break you he will break you when jacob was traveling he was traveling with the abrahamic blessing he was the only custodian of the abrahamic blessing on earth so by reason of ordination he should prosper but there was no way god could walk with him when he touched the altars that abraham built prayer rose up to heaven and an angel showed up he broke his thigh bone and he said as a prince thou hast power with god and has prevailed so the reason the guy will rule among men was not because he carried the blessing it was because he became a prince he was broken the same song you sing can announce you to the nations the hair you make can announce you to the nation the only difference is for a spirit to alight on it you can say pure water and be a millionaire the difference is for a spirit to alight on it but before a spirit will fraternize with a man he must accept the government of that spirit this is where men are made this is where stories of people are changed but all of these things are born by prayer if you don't pray you can't perceive the windows of heaven the atmosphere of zion cannot crystallize on your soul so every season in Jesus' life, he activated it by prayer. The Bible said he went to the wilderness. The Holy Ghost led him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But when he was going to the wilderness, he changed the season. He altered it. That was a season of temptation. But by prayer, Jesus turned it to a season of promotion. So when he was coming down from what should be the mountain of temptation, it became the mountain of announcement. So he left the mountain of temptation. He came down. The Bible says his fame went abroad. According to heaven, it was a season of temptation. But prayer changed it to a season of announcement. You did not notice that when they were at the marriage feast in Canaan, the wine was finished. They thought it was time for scarcity. Mary came to Jesus. And Jesus said, it is not yet my time. But Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. That means if you can pray, you can change your seasons. The promotion that is for five years, you can change it and make it next week. If you can invest enough prayer to Zion, prayers can all tie your season and change it for good. Jesus changed the season of temptation into a season of promotion. It's a mystery in Zion. Prayer is deeper than everything you think it is. You will be on one spot if you don't master the art of praying. If prayer is not your operating system, you will remain on one spot. Even the things that were your advantage, the seasons will pass, you will not use them. It is only prayer that sets the coordinates of Zion aright. So that everything that constitutes the advantage of a man can come into place. And the purposes of God can be born. Only men of prayer can discern seasons and maximize them. When Jesus was born, the Pharisees were in the temple. Reading the laws of Moses and reciting the Torah. But there were three men that were praying. One of them was a woman. Her name was Anna, the prophetess. Another one was Simeon, the prophet. They were praying. The moment Jesus came, the Bible said Simon went into the temple by the Spirit. The Spirit himself took him there. This is the season. Because he knew the intelligence of prayer. John showed out from the wilderness. And when he saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. How did he know him? Because he was separated in prayer. Some of you, your season will come, you will not recognize it. You will think it's, it's a season of disgrace. That's the time. That's what God has arranged for your glory. The reason God shrouded it in mystery is because if it is common, people can know it and take it away from you. The Bible said the mysteries, He said God has hid these things in mystery for your glory. But if you don't pray, you can't discern it. The things that should be your promotion, sometimes they come like insult. Sometimes they come like disgrace. It will take the eyes of discernment to see it. But the eyes of discernment are born on the altars of prayer. Abraham was trusting God for 25 years. The day the child came, he came as three men. Walking past his house and he said, Sars, Sars. He knew that these are not men. These are not men. He said, come into the house. They refused. He insisted. He said, sit down. Let me make supper. They refused. He insisted. When he fed them as they were living, God turned to him and said, in the next time of life, your wife Sarah will be with child. Faith of 25 years was consummated by a moment of discernment the goal is prayer you don't pray when your answers come from heaven you may not recognize it this is why many believers are backward and they cannot make impact in their generation if a man can pray 
the man can turn the tides of heaven and cause the rain to fall in dry season elijah told the king that rain will fall but the heavens were dry he went on his knees and the bible says seven times seven times he sent his servant go and look until he formed the fifth by prayer what appeared in heaven was not there he formed it by prayer he created that season by force because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man are valid God. He make a dynamic power available. They tell you your life will not work. They are joking. The only reason your life will not work is because you don't know the gate of prayer. If you know the intelligence of prayer, anything you want can happen. If only you can stay long enough. If you can stay long enough. When Elijah told the king rain will fall, the cloud was dry. But he knows that he knows how to pray. I know how to pray. Anything I say, I can make it happen on the altar. So he went to the altar. He created rain on the altar. He created it. He created rain on the altar. Nothing is difficult for a believer. If only he can pray. Your destiny can turn around in two weeks. The plague and the crisis you have experienced for ten years, you can change it in two weeks. They told John Austin's wife she was going to die in three days. She gathered 40 scriptures and was tonguing on those scriptures. 40 days became three months. It became eight months. It became ten years. She changed her story by prayer. Hannah came to Shiloh year in, year out. Nothing was happening. Everything she knew to do, she had given the seeds, she had given the sacrifices. Nothing was working. She left everybody and went to prayer. She prayed until her, her, her leaves were stammering. The priest saw her and thought she was drunk because of the depth she was praying from. And that day her story changed. People who are wise understand that prayer is one of the most potent infrastructure of downloading the dimensions of heaven. You can bet your season by prayer. You can create spiritual possibilities by prayer. You can end temptations by prayer. You can activate seasons by prayer. But men are not praying. We are looking up to people to change our story. The secret is prayer. That's why Jesus dwelt on his knees all his life. They saw him healing the sick every day. They didn't tell him to teach them how to heal the sick. They said, teach us how to pray. That means Jesus prayed more than everything in his life. They saw everything happening around him. They knew that it was prayer that bettered it. So they asked for the grace to pray. He said they looked up to him and they were radiant. Their faces were radiant and they were not ashamed. How many can look up to him? Your story can turn around. You can change your territory. If only you pray enough until God is born on your inside. Then authority is conferred on your walls. When you come to the territory, it's a time to decree. It's no longer a time to pray. But you would have prayed at the backside. Men who changed their walls were men of prayer. They were locked away in caves because they knew that only when you touch heaven can you change earth. They knew. They knew. Daniel was not in the palace. A hand came and wrote on the wall. And when they needed to know the meaning, they went and invoked the man of prayer. They knew that that kind of wisdom could not be crystallized in the palace. Only men that talk with spirits can get such wisdom. And when he showed up, he said, Mene, mene. This hand came from where I dwell. The city where I travel to in the spirit, that's where this hand came from. I don't need a teacher to read it. I know this language. Where I go to heaven, this is the language they speak. They say, Mene, mene. Take care of our sin. Mene, mene. Before the guy even he read the writing, he went around and made a mockery of the king. He said, your father, God gave him the kingdom and gave him power and authority. He raised the kingdom and the dynasty, touched the ends of the earth. He said, it was handed over to you and you came to worship the God of stone and iron. He said, therefore is the hand come. Mene, mene. Take care of our sin. He said, you have been weighed on the balances. How did he know how men are weighed? Who taught him that there is a system in the spirit for weighing men? The errors of men are weighed. And they say, your kingdom has been divided from your hand. And it has been given to the medics and the patients. That night the king fell. Because a man came from the spirit realm. You want to dwell in heaven. The gateway is prayer. You don't pray, you can't be relevant. There is not one man that changed this world without prayer. Even when God looked at the earth. And he said he will destroy everything in the earth. 
one man changed, made God to change his mind. His name was called Noah. He said, Noah found grace with God. You will think Noah was lucky. The Bible said God looked at the earth. He said he will destroy man and beast. Nobody was qualified. But there was something Noah was doing. It was when Noah came out of the ark in Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 that we knew what Noah was doing that made Noah develop the stature to cause God to change his mind. He said, Noah raised an altar unto the Lord. So one man was more important than the whole world. It's possible for one man to save a territory, but he will need to know the dynamics of altars. He must know the ways of prayer. He may not be popular, but he can sit in his bedroom and he say, Lord, give the earth one more year of mercy. And then you will think it's the number of churches that is making things happen. The Bible said in Colossians 4.12, a Pafaras is one of you. A born servant of Christ, laboring fervently for you in prayer, that you may stand perfect. That means the whole nation was standing perfect because a Pafaras was praying. God rose up in Exodus 32. He said, I will wipe out Israel. How about the covenant he had with Abraham? He didn't count. And Moses will rise up in intercession and say, how do you want it to be heard? That's a man talking with God. Men are not the same, my brother. Men of prayer are ranking men in Zion. They consult with spirits. They talk to angels. And they give commands from heaven. How do you want it to be heard? That you, the everlasting God, delivered them from captivity and destroyed them in the wilderness. He said, repent. I thought it's God that tells men to repent. Rank in the spirit. You can come and speak over your family and things will change. This is what the elders of old knew. So when they bless their children, they don't give them cattles. You will hear that Abraham was old and stricken in age. The Lord had blessed him in all things. When he wanted to settle Isaac, he didn't give him cattles. He said, El Shaddai keep you. He gave, he spoke. That word he spoke. Even inflation cannot define it. When Isaac wanted to bless Jacob, he didn't give him a cattle. He said, I bless you with the dew of heaven. I bless you with corn and wine. He gave him the seal of authority that he had in the spirit. So Isaac, anywhere he goes, he will prosper. Anywhere Jacob goes, he will prosper. A man of prayer was talking from heaven. They could curse you. And if you like, get a job with Chevron, you will not prosper. He told Jacob, he told jo, uh, his first son, Reuben, he said, you are the beginning of my strength. That means by reason of nature, you should be a mighty man. He said, but as unstable as water, you will not prosper. He cursed the guy, and the guy, no matter what he did, he couldn't prosper. Until another man of prayer came, and Moses entered into heaven. And he climbed into where Jacob was standing when he cursed Reuben. And he said, let Reuben live and not die. They changed systems by prayer. They changed civilizations by prayer. They altered territories by prayer. These men don't talk. They talk after they have prayed. You can walk to your family today and say, I banish death and nobody will die. You can come to your family today and look at your brother that graduated from the university and cannot get a job. And you say you are settled. And in one week his story can change. If only you will pray enough. There is a place in Zion where men are decorated with the badge of authority. But only men of prayer can travel there. And you rise up and pray for one minute.